Hello everybody, Hal Strigity here. Um, today I would like to talk about, I think I'm going to make a, maybe a series of videos about uh, the defensive use of auxiliary functions um, in the uh, Myers-Briggs um, typology model. Um, I've got some reasons I'm looking into this. A uh, nice one, you know, for me is, is definitely to understand how, how my defenses um, play in, although I've, I've already been looking at that for some time, um, but it'll be nice to articulate them and then I'll get those out there. And I'm also just looking at that still as um, helping to differentiate from the loops um, in, in understanding people and everything else like that. Um, but to launch in before I pass up a minute not even having said anything, I'd like to start at least with my own type, ENTP, um, and uh, for the ENTP, well, what <laughs> What I'm talking about here, too, is the idea that um, everybody has a dominant function. Your second function, your auxiliary function, you tend to only use up to a certain extent um, to justify the use of your dominant function and your tertiary function. Um, so for myself, I would, I would be using my subjective logic to um, help defend myself uh, against other people's wishes to bring me into a different world than leading out with my extroverted intuition and then following up with my extroverted feeling. That's kind of where that, that's kind of where um, I'm going to want to be a lot of the time. And I'll use subjective logic only up to the point perhaps to maintain that situation as opposed to using it in all of its, its fullness. Um, evidences of this or, or how this would look anyhow um, and I did start writing some notes on it this time. Um, so I have um, the TI would be defensive, uh, defensively subjective logic, greedy, and self-preservation. So I think what kind of gets into there is, um, is I mean, I, I guess personal agendizing and um, self-preservation. Yeah, I mean, basically, it's not actually the same as trying to make a statement and it's not like trying to make a moral or cultural statement all the time or anything else like that, but more more just the self-concern. Um, not saying that other types couldn't have that or anything else like that, but but literally the, well, I don't want to do this, or, well, it's not, you know, um, and, and, and using logical explanations as to why, uh, why those things would be the case. Where have I experienced this the most? activities that everybody wants you to do and you don't want to and then you whine because I want to have fun with the people I want to be interacting with the people and everything else like that but I don't want to go pay to go out to eat and I don't want to make somebody else pay for me to go out to eat I just don't want to pay like it's not it's not in my it's not in my my you know agenda I guess internally that way or 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 you know, whatever. I don't want to have to, if I, if I spend money, then I have to go and make money and that requires boring. And then, you know, like that whole, um, that, that whole continuum is just not as, not as fun that way. So, and I mean, so if it was a novel or if it was something I really wanted to do, well then, you know, fine. There are plenty of times when it's like, okay, you know, um, be really stingy and I don't want to go out to eat this place, this place and that place because I've eaten there all, you know, all these places before, but then, People want to go to the Renaissance Festival, well, I'll blow a bunch of money to go to the Renaissance Festival. Um, so that, that can kind of be. But just that that idea that it's actually, um, that that logic is just being used, I, I, I guess, defensively in a lot of situations. Um, also, to, also to support um, extroverted intuitions, um, ideologies. And um, so, I mean, like, if you're, if you come up with the point of, of, you think that you've got some great idea, or you've got something, you're not sure why other people don't think it would work. Um, being so defensive with the subjective logic as well, if I logically analyze this, you know, this seems to be the, you know, I'm not saying you have to talk like that, but just going through and saying, well, it all stands to reason um, in that in that manner um, isn't always necessarily <laughs> um, actually extending um the, the inverted thinking all the way out to the, the point that you would be encompassing other viewpoints. And the work I'm going off of this way, I'm trying to remember the author, but um, she, she talks about this a book I've got. Um, yeah, I should have looked at that. But, um, but, but she talks about that some as, as once you develop a function, um, extroverted intuition in its fully developed sense um, from, from her work or her perspective, 
would then start bringing you towards the ability to to actually use it almost like introverted intuition. The same thing with TI. The more you develop introverted thinking, finally as you start using it to its full extent, it has some TE capabilities um, so that it would actually be able to, to deal with more objective logic as opposed to only subjective logic, only you know self-preserving, self self thought out logic in that in that sense. Um, so I think it's actually a pretty interesting interesting theory that way. Um, to, to flip back to extroverted intuition because I think that's a, actually a good example being a being extroverted intuitive dominant. Um, people think that okay extroverted intuitives um, like to to make you know like um, they, they really trust their intuition so they'll just kind of they'll just kind of go with it. Well, there's things I'll go with. When I go with something, I know I don't know. Um, that's just kind of the beauty of it. You know, with, with a lot of stuff, is just like I'm chasing. I'm chasing the possibility that I might know. Um, so I might, I might pursue something that other people might find frivolous because it's like, well, how do you, you don't, you know, know if it's going to turn out or not. And then other times when, yeah. But um, so where I should get to on that is the idea that extroverted intuition paints a lot of possibilities and you, you, you follow those possibilities. But when you're really put in the hot seat of putting all your money on the line on one thing, um, and you, I, I've faced this challenge before from some, you know, from some people, I may have a perfectionist view on something. I may have, I, I, I may feel like I've got it decently thought out. I may feel like I've got a good vision of something, but then somebody will bring it down to, well, you bet a thousand dollars on it, you know? And I mean, if you're being hypothetical or something, you know, whatever. But to just go with my gut and just say, well, my gut has a really good idea of this and I'd really like to explore this. To make that jump between my gut has a really good idea of this and my gut really like to explore this to, well, yeah, I'm 100% sure it's going to work. Well, I just, <laughs> it just, it, that that can get a little, little bit hard. Um, I would actually almost find that it's more easily done in physical situations or I, I don't know I, yeah I don't know which kind of situations but um, so the idea is eventually as a person develops um, as a person would develop their extroverted intuition they would eventually learn to trust their deductive intuition um, to the point that they would allow it to say okay you know I'm painting all these possibilities but I should also just trust my gut reaction possibility um, and, and and that's kind of what I'm looking at there so how TI would actually function for me I'm finding now as I talk about this function for me in, in total you know in in the complete form I don't know if that means that um, you know fully developed TI for an auxiliary user would allow them to you know better better lead or, or you know dictate in a logical sense or you know that kind of deal or what it would do. So that part I guess I'm finding lacking, but um, definitely see evidence for the defensive um, the defensive TI use in my life. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, definitely. Well, man, I probably could have made it a lot shorter is, uh, I mean, the defensive TI use I think would probably be pretty evident in ENTPs of, of uh, <laughs> not only not, you know, for me, not wanting to go spend the money on this frivolous thing or that frivolous thing because you know, I'm being greedy or just trying to, you know, like self-preservation that way. Um, but besides that, um, needing options, needing options for social events, needing options for, you know, don't try to make me stay at your house. Don't try to make me get stuck all the way across town and there's no, not going to be any other ride or I need options. Um, you know, uh, if I know that, you know, well, if we go there, if I don't, you know, I do that to people all the time. Well, if we go, I don't want to be stuck there. So, you know, what if I want to leave in an hour? And then they assure me that that won't be a problem. And then whenever they assure me it won't be a problem, I end up staying for like five or six hours anyhow, even though I swore I was going to be to bed. And, you know, but it, it's just the idea of not having the option. It's just like, you know, I no, I think I'll drive separately so I can leave whenever I want, you know. And that's that's defensive TI use. So it took me almost ten minutes to find it, but um, I think that's the best best example of um, defensive TI use. I think I'll end the video here. Um, well, and I left the hat on. I'll leave it on just for my video, and I'll take it off for the. You know, maybe I'll leave it on for the ENFP one. I'll do the ENFP one, then I'll take it off because they'll probably like the hat. But.
it's a shout out to my sister. She bought it to me for for me for Christmas. So, um, so that's yeah, that's that. And I think I'll throw some other defensive um, videos up, and probably get more articulate on the subject as I go. We'll see. Thanks for watching, everybody.